Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today is going to be my first video recorded in Nicaragua. Uh, for those who don't know, that is in Central America. I got here about a week ago. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, so we're actually recording a video in a hostel room. It's pretty awkward to be honest, but uh, we're going to do it. So what we have for you today is 10 Grand Exchange tips and tricks to help you improve your profit. These will be actual methods or tiny little techniques that you can use. They're not going to be like overall general tips or things that won't actually help you directly. All right, so hope you enjoy and let's get started. All right, coming in at number one is gonna be page set combinations. So if you didn't know, you can actually buy all four of any God page set on the Grand Exchange in a set form. So let's say the Book of Law page set is gonna be, well, about one mil and it's gonna contain the four pages, our mill page one, two, three, and four to create it. However, most people aren't gonna go ahead and buy the pages individually, they'll go and buy the set. So because of this, you can actually get a very good margin on page sets. So we have a look on G-Tracker. They are a sponsor of mine, so go check them out. There will be a link in the description for that. It's a nice way of showing it. So the Unholy Page book contains Zamrak pages one through four and has a margin of 61K. Now all you have to do is go and buy all the pages at a cheap price. So let's go have a look at the Unholy book page set. So let's see if we can buy it for, we can buy it for 16 and 19, so decent. We'll just sell it back for the money right now. Obviously, I'm not going to be making money on this particular flip, but I'm just trying to show you an example here. Oh my god, I haven't tried using the calculator on um, my Windows 10 computer. This thing is huge. Anyway, so we're going to go claim all the offers and basically just subtract the price that you can sell the page sets for, and then you subtract the price that you can buy the pages for. So in an ideal world, you would make 76 k per page set combination. Now they have a buying limit of 5 I believe, so it's about a 380k flip. Very good. Now coming in at number 2 is item set combinations. It's pretty much the exact same thing as page sets, however uh, certain armor items have uh, sets you can make. Most notably Barrow's items are particularly good for this, however we can do it with rune uh, item sets or Guthix rune armor and stuff like that, but it doesn't work nearly as well. I'm not going to show you this example because it's essentially the exact same thing. If you have a look on G-Tracker, they usually have a couple near the top because usually one of them is pretty good. Like look at this, Kirill's armor set right now is showing about a 300k profit per item set combination and you can do actually 10 of these. Uh, that's not right, <laughs> 10 uh, limit per 4 hours so you can make a ton of money doing this. This would be a 3 mil flip theoretically. Coming in at number 3 is actually going to be decanting crushed bones. That's kind of the best word I have for it. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is buy any kind of item that needs crushing. Currently, items like the Superior Dragon Bone tend to work really well. I'm not sure if the margin is still going to be good or not. I haven't checked it yet, but let's just go have a quick look. So currently there isn't really a margin for this, but just so you know in the future, an NPC called Wesley or Weasley will actually be able to grind bones for you um, instantly. You can bring a stack of noted bones if you want uh, for 50 coins on an item. A couple weeks ago I was getting a 200 to 250 GP margin on superior dragon bones however sometimes it can work for desert goat horn or other items but you will need 50 GP or more and probably you want to look around 100. Uh, you can do dragon scales and a dragon scale dust, a bird's nest, however I don't think that would ever be profitable. But he's a very useful NPC that a lot of people don't know about. He is an artist so it's a bit of a trek but totally worth it. Coming in at number four is decanting potions. Now this is something that I do quite frequently. What you're gonna be doing is buying potion three doses and decanting them into potion four doses. Now it's a little tricky to find the margin, but pretty much what you do is you buy and sell a super attack potion three. And you get that. Then you're gonna buy the potion four dose and note the price that you could sell that for. So currently we're able to sell it for 330. Now here's a little bit of a tricky margin to calculate, but it's really not that bad. So what you have to do is you have to take the price that you bought the Super Attack Potion 4 at, which is in turn going to be the price that you can sell that, and multiply it by 0.75. Since when you decant the potions, you're going to lose 25% of the potions, but you're going to gain uh, Super Attack Potion 4s. You need to multiply it by 0.75 to get an even margin, and then you're just going to subtract the price that you can buy them at, which is 204, to get your margin. And you can do 2,000 of these every 4 hours, so that's going to be an 87k flip. These are extremely quick and I would recommend doing it. Okay, coming to number five is a kind of niche one that you can't do very frequently. However, occasionally it can come in handy and that is removing poison from items. Now, it works really well with rune arrow peas or stuff like that where you can do a multiple items in one go because it will remove all 10,000 uh, poison charges from 10,000 arrows just in one go. So it only takes a second. Now right now it's not profitable and it isn't often, however sometimes when you're looking at the prices the rune arrow P will actually be cheaper than your rune arrow. So what you do is buy 
10,000 Runero peas, maybe it'd be cheaper. You remove it with the cleaning cloth instantly, and then you sell off just the regular rune arrows for more. Now you can do this with DDSs, other items that have poison on it. Not something you can do all the time, but something to keep in mind. Coming in at number 6 is going to be doing the Barrow's Repair. Now basically the way this works is you buy totally degraded Barrow's items and you repair it either in a player owned house or from Bob in Lumbridge. I've used Bob, you're going to be losing out a little bit of your profit. G-Tracker is a nice tool for this as well that I'm looking at right now, but let's have a look at the Krill's Leather Top. So what you do is you buy the Krill's Leather Top Zero, and I'm checking the margin right now, again, not going to be making money off this. They really don't sell that much, so it's a bit risky to try to buy one. But let's have a look at it on G-Tracker. And with items that are this slow, they're pretty accurate on G-Tracker normally. So we're looking at about 1885, and if we look at how much the Krill's Leather Top is when it has been repaired, Okay, we just bought it for 2500 Oh my god. I think we messed that up a bit. That was a pig in the background. Don't mind that too much. Um, but yeah, so you can see that stuff like this can give you really good margins. Although I just lost 300 k on this item. God damn it. It's a really safe flip, however. You definitely want to leave this in like overnight. Uh, because uh, it's very slow. Next up, coming at number 7, is breaking down Zora items into Zora scales. You can do this by, I think, 3 or 4 different items. The Serpentine Helm, the Serpentine Visage, if you want, the Tanzanite Fang, as well as the Magic Fang. Basically, you just have to multiply the price of Zora scales by 20,000, because that is how many Zora scales you're going to get by decanting, essentially, or dismantling one of the items. So let's look at the Magic Fang right now. So 2,900 is what we bought it for, but hopefully we can get it for cheaper for around 2,866. Now if we have a look at the price of Zara scales right now, we're looking to sell them for 150. So 150 times uh, 20,000 is going to be 3 mil actually per item. We'll actually go buy some of these after. Right now that's about 150k profit, is that right? Coming in at number 8 is going to be crafting Odium Wards out of Odium Shard 1, 2, and 3s. Now this one's going to differ a little bit from the other methods because you actually need to go into Wilderness for this one. I'm going to leave a video link for this because I am literally dying in this hostel room. I'm getting so hot, um, so we don't really have enough time in this video to go over it exactly. But I have done this in a video before, and I will leave a link in the description for that. Essentially, you just buy the Odium Shard 1, 2, and 3 on the Grand Exchange, and then you go into the Deep Wilderness and craft it into an Odium Ward or a Malediction Ward. And now the margins can be huge, like 500k. Uh, however, the items are very slow to buy, but it's something to keep in mind. Coming at number 9 is crafting Eternal Boots, Primordial Boots, or Pagasian boots. Now the kicker here is you do need I think 55 room crafting to make the combination which is extremely random and you will need a pretty solid cash stack to do this. However all you need to do is buy the Eternal Crystal and Infinity Boots and combine them together. It's really easy. Uh, you can get 80k margins, 100k margins and items do buy pretty quickly. Some of them more than others though. And coming at number 10 is going to be crafting Toxic Blowpipes or Toxic Tridents out of the Tanzanite Fang or the Magic Fang. Now you do need a crafting level for this, but it's extremely easy to do. All you have to do is buy the Magic Fang on the Grand Exchange and use a chisel on it. Now you can get usually about 50k per item on this. It's still a very good method to do when you get a chance. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and I will see you somewhere cooler where I will not literally die in here without the fan on. Anyway, see you guys later.